Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 9 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about days receivables. In simple terms, days receivables is the time taken by the company to convert its credit sales, that is account receivables into cash. In this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. Understand what days receivables is. Number two, what is formula and the calculations. Number three, calculate days receivables of Colgate. That's our case study. And number four, what its interpretations. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder for you. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is days receivables? Days receivables is also known as the average collection days and it forms a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the turnover ratios. If you remember last time we discussed the receivables turnover ratio and uh, days receivables is actually very closely related to that. I'll come to how it is related but just to give you an intuitive understanding of what days receivables mean. Days receivables mean how much time in days you take to convert your receivables that is the credit which you have given to your customers how much time do you take to convert that credit to cash so the customers usually take time to pay how much time on an average the company takes to pay back uh, to the company so that's how the days receivables can be understood let's look at the formula for this and you will get a, a pretty much a good understanding of how to interpret and calculate it okay so let's let's do that it's basically divided into two parts, this day's receivables formula. The first part is, uh, as I said, it's closely related to account receivables turnover ratio. You need to calculate that first. And uh, if you remember from our previous video, this is the formula that we used. Account receivables turnover is equal to net credit sales divided by your average accounts receivables. What was net credit sales? Net credit sales was, you know, the net of all the refunds and the returns. And uh, the credit sales essentially means the amount which you haven't received in cash. Okay, so you have given that on credit. And the average account receivables, the average account receivables is nothing but the, the start of the account receivables reported on the balance sheet and at the end of the year so the average of the two so that's what you take why do you take the average we discussed that too but just to uh, you know reiterate it basically helps us in smoothing out the overall uh, account receivables amount because this is the data which we get at one point in time so the start and the end but we don't get it throughout the year right on day one day two day three likewise but on the other hand, the numerator, the net credit sales is for the full year. So the average actually helps us in smoothing out the overall average account receivable, I mean the overall receivables amount that is available. So that's formula number one. Now coming to the days receivables, as I said, it's also called as the average collection period. Uh, the formula is fairly simple. That is equal to 365 days divided by your accounts receivables. So it's it's very simple. If you have calculated this amount, account receivables turnover, you can easily calculate the days receivables by dividing 365 to that turnover ratio. All right, so this is how is the two-step process. Let us now move and uh, calculate it for one of the companies, I mean, one of the hypothetical examples and see how it works. So let us now take a quick example to calculate the days receivables or the average collection period. So here is the uh, data that we have. Credit sales is 100,000, returns is 20,000, receivables at the start is 30,000, receivables at the end is 50,000. The first step, as uh, you, you might have remember, the first step is to calculate account receivables turnover ratio. For that, we will be needing the net credit sales, right? So the net credit sales will be 100,000 minus 20,000 that is equal to 80,000 here. And uh, how do you calculate the average receivables? You know, the start, end divided by two. So I will use the average formula of it given in Excel. So that's fairly simple. 
and what we get here is the average receivables as 40,000. So net credit sales is 80, average receivables is 40,000. So how do we calculate the receivables turnover? Net credit sales divided by your average accounts receivables. Okay, so here we have step one, account receivables turnover calculation that is equal to 80,000 divided by your 40,000 so that we get is two. Now, if you have to as the account receivables turnover ratio, what is step two in order to calculate the days receivables? So days receivables will be nothing but 365 divided by your account receivables turnover ratio, right? So that's what we learned from this formula. So that comes out to be 182.5 days. Okay, so how do we interpret this? It basically means the company is taking 182.5 days to convert its accounts receivables to cash. Okay, so that's a very simple interpretation and that's how it is. All right, so having understood how to calculate the days receivables, let us now look at how it can be done in the case of Colgate. So here is Colgate's uh, balance sheet and it has the past five years data. And I want you to actually scroll down and uh, reach this uh, row number 113. And uh, if you remember from our previous video, we have already done step one, that is calculation of receivables turnover ratio. And it was like 10.69 for December 2017. And it was slightly improving and went to 12.18. So if you're wondering how the calculations are done, in this case, I would encourage you to look at that video. The calculations have, are fairly simple. In this video, we'll concentrate on calculating the day's receivables. Okay, so having done the first step, the second step was again uh, very, very simple. This was like the formula is 365 divided by receivables turnover. Okay, so that's how it is. 365 divided by your receivables turnover, that is 10.69. Okay, so it comes out to be 34.1 days. Okay, and I'll freeze this cell and I'll copy the formula across. So, as you can see, uh, in December 2017, Colgate was collecting its uh, account receivables every 34.1 days, and uh, every year they are kind of improving its uh, collection period or the days receivables period, and now it is around 30 days. So this is how, you know, uh, the calculations are typically done. And if you want to, again, uh, look at its interpretation, as we did for the receivables turnover, you have to look at the collection period of the industry. And then you have to understand that if it is more than the industry, let us now look at the interpretation of days receivables. Now, look at this data, which is 30 days, whether it is good or bad, I'm sure you would now recollect that as in the case of receivables turnover ratio, we could not just look at the number and say that whether it was good or bad, we compared that with the industry. So in our previous video, we looked at Procter & Gamble has around a receivables turnover of 15.5 and uh, Colgate has 12.18. So we said that uh, Colgate has lots of work to do because Procter & Gamble is in a better position to, in terms of receivables turnover, they're doing a great job. Likewise, if you look at Procter & Gamble from average collections period, that would be how much? 365 divided by 15.5. So they are collecting their uh, account receivables every 23.54 days. And uh, Colgate is doing that job in only 30 days. So again, if we consider this as a peer group, Colgate is uh, is far, far behind and they have to play a catch-up role. The credit policy of Colgate is 30 days, whereas credit policy of Procter & Gamble is only 23.54 days. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.